Hello and welcome to my channel. In this channel, we explain various nursing concepts in a simple form for better and easy understanding. These videos could be used by both LPN and RN students as well as nurses who are trying to refresh their basic concepts. My name is Nas Mosh. In this video, we are going to talk about hypo and hyperpituitarism. So hypopituitarism is a deficiency of one or more of the pituitary gland hormones and the hormones include TSH, prolactin, FSH, LH, SCTH, GH, ADH and oxytocin. So the causes of hypopituitarism could be an issue with the pituitary gland like like a pituitary tumor, congenital defect or trauma and it also could be a cause by the hypothalamus. So signs and symptoms depends on the hormones that are being affected and in most cases the growth hormone is affected and with a patient with hypopituitarism will note that they have a delayed growth the fsh and lh will, could be affected and with this will note an importance in both females and males and the patient could have effects of hypothyroidism as well as sense and symptoms of insufficient adrenal insufficiency which could be because of the pituitary gland not producing enough acth signs and symptoms of adrenal insufficiency include weakness fatigue hypoglycemia weight loss orthostatic hypertension labs and diagnosis with labs and diagnosis, we all take a look of the pituitary hormones that are being affected and check their level. So for example, the LH and the FSH levels, we'll check if it's within the recommended levels. Some of the diagnostic tests we'll give will be the SCTH simulating test. We could also do a CT scan or an MRI to check the pituitary gland and see if there's anything we can identify, anything like of a tumor or an abnormality with the pituitary gland. Treatment, the patient will require hormone replacement therapy. For example, medications like corticosteroids, thyroid replacing hormones, sex hormones and growth hormones depending on where they are having deficiencies. Hyperpituitarism, with hyperpituitarism, we have an oversecretion of the pituitary gland hormones. So the causes of this could be these are pituitary adenoma, which is a benign tumor in the pituitary gland, or tissue hyperplasia, which is overgrowth of tissue, and either the both of them, which takes place in the anterior pituitary gland. And this could compress the brain tissue and cause increased secretion of growth hormone, prolactin and ACTH. So signs and symptoms due to compression of the brain tissue, this can cause uh, an increase in intracranial pressure. Symptoms of increased intracranial pressure include headache, nausea and vomiting. Increased growth hormones could lead to agromegaly. Increased ACTH can increase cortisol levels and patients may have signs and symptoms of Cushing disease and in increased prolactin levels can result in sexual dysfunctions. Diagnosis, we can either do a CTI or MRI scan of the pituitary gland which will show the adenoma or tissue hypoplasia. With treatment, surgery is normally performed where we could remove the tumor. It could be either a partial or a complete removal of the pituitary gland. Medications, some medications that could be administered include dopamine antagonists, uh, which inhibit growth hormone or prolactin secretion and somostatin for agromegaly. Nursing care and patient teaching after hypophysectomy. Monitor for CSF leak, which is cerebral spinal fluid leak. And for this, we will look for a yellow ring. Outside the leak, the leak could be either clear or black. The patient could also have headache, sweet drainage, and the patient's uh, drainage could be also positive of glucose. We need to advise the patient to avoid activities that might increase intracranial pressure, which includes sneezing, coughing, blowing their nose, bending at the waist, and also straining during bowel movements. We administer stool softeners for that. This could also have a patient uh, decrease the sense of smell, which is expected to be for about a month after the procedure. And if the procedure is done through the oral cavity they are advised the patient should not brush their teeth for two weeks and it's okay for them to floss and rinse their mouth and the patient needs to understand that the, they will require a lifelong hormone replacement thank you for watching please like share and subscribe to my channel see you on the next one bye